more and more people are studying their sleep using smartwatches and fitness trackers like the Apple Watch and the Fitbit. But when I first got one of these, I had no idea what these sleep stages meant and what I could do with the data. In this vlog, I'll explain the principles behind the different sleep stages and I'll explain how devices like the Fitbit predict your sleep and how that compares to a professional EEG device like the one I'm wearing now. However, if you're interested in how well a Fitbit can actually predict your sleep, I made a separate vlog about that and that's linked below. In its simplest form, there are three stages of sleep. The most famous of these stages might be REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep. The other two stages are light sleep and deep sleep. Now light sleep makes up the bulk of your night at about 50%. Deep sleep makes up another 20% of your night. REM sleep another 20% and the remainder of your night you can spend awake. Now these percentages vary, so these are just averages, but this is roughly how your night is divided. Now a normal night's sleep is divided in cycles that repeat themselves. Each cycle starts with some combination of light sleep and deep sleep and ends with REM sleep. And then the next cycle starts starting with light and deep sleep and ending with REM sleep. Now let me try to visually explain. Here I've drawn out a night of 8 hours and divided it into two equal parts. Now we're going to draw out a typical night's sleep. As you start your night, you'll probably be awake. Then first you'll have some light sleep, followed by a period of deep sleep. And as we said, all sleep cycles end with REM sleep. The first sleep cycle takes roughly 90 minutes, and the cycles after that are usually slightly longer at about 110 minutes. So let's draw that out. So now we've drawn out a full night of sleep and we can clearly see the four distinct sleep cycles that all end in REM sleep. Here's the first one, the second one, the third one and the fourth one. In the first half of the night the sleep cycles have most of your deep sleep, interspersed with light sleep and ending in relatively short REM periods. In the second half of the night the sleep cycles contain almost no more deep sleep and the REM periods increase in length. We're still not exactly sure what each of the sleep stages are for, but we have some ideas. Deep sleep, for instance, is the most restorative form of sleep. During deep sleep, growth hormones are released to help restore your body and your immune system restores itself. It can also be difficult to wake somebody up during deep sleep and sleepwalking and sleep talking occur during deep sleep. During REM sleep, you experience your most vivid dreams. And as a protective measure, your body often paralyzes itself. Because if you would act out your dreams, you could injure yourself or others. And during light sleep, your body processes your experiences of the day and your metabolism also balances itself. Let's get back to these devices. How does each of them detect what sleep stage I'm in? Let's start off with the EEG device or electroencephalography device. This particular EEG device uses 14 electrodes all across my face and my head to detect the electrical activity in my brain. Each sleep stage is accompanied by very specific brainwave patterns and that's how it can detect the different sleep stages. Now I'm not going to go into any detail about these brainwave patterns, I'll make a future video about that, but I want to give you a quick visual impression of what they look like. So here's the different brainwave patterns. So the most extreme difference you can see here is between being awake and being in deep sleep. When you're awake and relaxed you mainly produce these things called alpha waves which are very high in frequency but not so intense. Whereas during deep sleep, you have these very slow, high intensity waves. In addition to brain activity, the EEG monitor can also pick up on muscle movement. For instance, this electrode near my eye helps it pick up on rapid eye movement and it can also detect heart rate. The Fitbit on the other hand doesn't measure brain activity at all, but it uses different data as they show on their website. So here we have part of the help section of the Fitbit website. 
And indeed, they mentioned that the gold standard for measuring sleep stages is electroencephalography, or EEG. Of course, the Fitbit has to use different data. And specifically, they say they use movement and heart rate patterns, both to detect that you're asleep and also to see which sleep stage you're in. And specifically, they say they use the beat to beat changes in your heart rate, which is known as heart rate variability, to discern between the different sleep stages. And they also use your movement. Now, the Fitbit algorithm is proprietary, so we don't know how it works. But we can say a few things. We know, for instance, that in deep sleep you move less than in light sleep and your heart rate is lower. When you move to REM sleep, you move even less because of this muscular paralysis that prevents you from acting out your dreams. But of course, the Fitbit does far fewer measurements than the EEG device does. And it's also much farther away from the thing that actually regulates your sleep, your brain. That leaves the question, what can you actually do with all this data that the Fitbit collects? Even if it predicted your sleep 100% correctly, for most people it would hold no value if they couldn't use it to somehow improve their lives. There's probably a ton of ways in which you can use the sleep data that the Fitbit provides, but I think there's one piece of information that's most valuable and most easy to use for most of us, and I just want to give you my take on that. We're living in a pretty fast-paced world and a lot of people, myself included, are usually not getting the sleep we're supposed to. And the main reason is that we're just simply not spending enough time in bed. And a Fitbit is a real easy way of keeping yourself accountable. It's really good at tracking when you go to sleep and when you get up and you can see in the app that you just didn't get enough sleep. So if you just want to keep yourself accountable, a Fitbit might be an option. I do think there is additional valuable information in a more detailed sleep analysis that gives you each of those individual sleep stages, but they can be a bit tricky to interpret. But if you have any thoughts on that, please leave it in the comments below or if you have any way of using that data. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel and want more content like this, please subscribe.